Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. In front of us today is a Lego set that I have been waiting to do a review on for quite a long time. This is the Jurassic Park Velociraptor Chase set number 75932. Comes with exactly 360 parts. It sells for $39.99 in the States, $49.99 in Europe, and comes with four minifigs. That would be Alan Grant, Ellie, Sattler, Lex Murphy, as well as Tim Murphy. This is Lego's tribute set to the original Jurassic Park film, so it includes a series of scenes that happens towards the end of the movie when the uh, protagonists are getting chased and or hunted down by a couple of velociraptors that are just sort of out on the prowl. This set is riddled with different little details that reference back to the film, whether it's a reference to a particular scene or just a movie prop that happened to be within the room or an area that is very, very recognizable for those that know the movie like the back of their hand, like maybe some people in this room right now. Also, right before I jump into the minifigs, last thing I want to say is that I was expecting this to be one of the highest part-to-price ratio sets within the Jurassic World wave, but believe it or not, it is the second best priced part-to-price ratio. It's the second best price set that we got from this entire wave, which I found really, really surprising. All right, jumping into the minifigs now. Definitely the best one from the set was Ellie Sattler. Just the expressions on her face look a little bit more um, genuine and or just have more personality than the other characters. And the print that makes up the shorts and socks and boots for her legs, also being dual molded. That's just a really, really nice set of prints. Um, it almost feels like they took that from a collectible minifigure from the collectible minifig series, I'm not entirely sure. And the print that makes up the tied pink shirt that goes over the other shirt. There's a little bit of sweat stains. Lots of wrinkle prints though that go in towards that tied area in the front. It looks really good. It honestly, this is like one of the more solid prints that I've seen portraying a specific character from a specific scene uh, out of any movie based character from a Lego minifig. Ellie looks really solid and this is Grant here. He's got a few little wrinkles that kind of outline the sides of his face, not too much, and he has the one little mole on his cheek, so this definitely is an exclusive print for the character. He doesn't have an alternate expression because he is wearing sort of a larger fedora, kind of Indiana Jones-esque hat, though it's kind of a different mold than what we get for the older fedora pieces. The print for his shirt is also exclusive, showing a few folds in there, not quite as dirty or wrinkled as Ellie's. He's got the little uh, red bandana that comes out that's tucked underneath the front. No printing on the legs, and the stud gun in his hands is really just there to represent kind of a chromed out shotgun that he has in this scene, but of course LEGO isn't going to make a shotgun piece uh, today, tomorrow, or any year, I don't think. But for the purpose that it needs to serve in this set, I think it works out just fine. When it comes to the kids, Lex Murphy is probably, actually, she's probably the second best character from the set just because of the absolutely incredibly detailed print that makes up the front and back of her torso. Her shirt really did have a very intricate set of designs, and I like that they kept it so colorful here because I think at this point within the movie, she fell into mud and she got all dirty and the shirt looks basically brown at this point, but I'm glad that they just decided to keep it looking new and just decided to push themselves a little bit with the detailing here. It really pays off. It's a great looking torso piece. She's got kind of a standard kid print for the face and a ponytail piece that is molded in light nougat. Timmy too should or could be super, super dirty in this scene. I think at this point he's already been electrocuted, but I mean, might as well have him looking brand spanking new and they're all happy to go out on an adventure here. His expressions too are just kind of standard and basic. They don't really convey any type of terror as like they're being hunted by a velociraptor, but the stripes on the t-shirt is a great print. There's just so many detailed colors in that small area right in the front center of the torso with the blue and the green and the red and the white and the other kind of blue. I mean, there's just a lot going on with this print as well. Very detailed. And I can tell that Lego really wanted to make all four of these minifigs look really good because this is a sort of a once in a, in a lifetime set. They're not going to be releasing another set with these characters any time later. I don't think that's going to happen any other time. This is the one time we're getting these four characters. And now let's jump into the build itself. Now starting off with the center, I've somewhat set up the scene where the Velociraptor will. Now I've set up the scene where the Velociraptor is trying to get through this main door and the power is off and Ellie is, or sorry, Lex is hacking uh, <laughs> to try to get 
the door to close and to lock everything and to basically get power back onto the grid. So we've got uh, Grant trying to hold the door. Ellie is trying to get a shotgun. It's, it's just out of her reach. I don't know if Tim is in this scene. I can't really remember. But anyways, let's go through all the different aspects of this room because really the there's so many things. Let's start sort of left to right. Okay, there we go. We've got Newman here. I'm, I'm just going to keep calling him Newman. Uh, you know, he's got his little ah, ah, ah. Didn't say the magic word. That's his little uh, hacked out little little virus that he left on the system that shut the whole thing down. Should have paid your programmer better. Anyways, um, this is a sticker graphic. By the way, these two are sticker graphics, but this is the hacking sticker graphic. Probably the one thing in the film that really doesn't, uh, I guess, age that well compared to maybe some of the other aspects of the film. Um, but then let's get to the door. The door here has kind of a lot of fun details. I'm gonna move these characters out of the way now. And the door here has the handle that's built in. This is nice because there is a, a shot where you can see the handle starting to turn down a little bit when the uh, raptor figures out that it can actually open doors and that's when they're really in trouble. So there's, I like that they actually built the door out for that. Um, there's a couple of little light indicators. This is to show you whether or not the uh, system has power. Um, this part is interesting because it's a poster, but I believe in the film it is actually an electronic screen that shows the different areas either having power or being online. Uh, they're either green when they're online and the red when they're offline, but you can see that it's detailed to look like it's just a taped up, kind of messed up looking poster thing, which I'm not sure if that's totally accurate to the film. Anyways, not a really big deal. And then this is the the red phone when they get when they get the power back on. He said he rings and he says, "Up, oh, the the phones are on" or something like that. Anyways, that is part of it. There are three accessories here. Got an umbrella as well as a uh, as a wrench and a walkie talkie. So. There's just a few extra accessories. Those all do kind of serve purposes within the movie as well. And that is about it for the Easter eggs within this room. If I missed anything, please somebody let me know. But there is one function here. So once again, the Raptor can try to make it through this door. And once Ellie properly hacks the system, this is the automated locking function. Now the door doesn't open. You can see how that cross piece just kind of feeds right into the hole. That's it. That's that's all you really need. And that actually kind of slides closed in a similar way as the auto lock works within the movie itself. Now here is the second scene and I think my favorite one from this set. This is where the kids are being chased down by the raptors. Here, by the way, is the raptor. I haven't really shown a good look at this guy. I'll, I'll show him off a little bit towards the end. But getting through this scene, you can see this is where uh, Lex has the jello and she's super super afraid because she sees Tim and Tim doesn't see the raptor that's standing behind him so I like that they included the jello there's actually an extra spoon included as well if you want them both to be eating jello and then the kitchen build itself is uh is pretty straightforward now by the way you can actually just take this entire little piece off it just fits in with some pin pieces to the main body of the build or you can have the kitchen separated if you wanted to create sort of its own little scene or a little vignette that kind of uh, pays homage to the scene. And uh, what I've got here set up now is Tim trying to get the doors closed. I think it's actually a vertical close uh, within the film and he can't quite do it. And what happens, uh, the raptor actually sees him and it goes in for the lunge, but what do you know? It was just a reflection on some other doors and he bangs his head and Tim manages to get away. Um, I just do like that they did have a space big enough to fit the uh, a kid minifigure in there. So you could actually play out that very specific and very, you know, the first time you watch that, you really do, your stomach kind of drops a little bit. You're like, oh, he's gonna get it. And then of course, uh, it's just kind of a, a fun visual trick. Uh, the kitchen does have, well, there's a spoon and there's a, a butcher's knife pan, another pan, and of course, a hot dog. It's a kitchen, it's Lego. Of course, there's a loose hot dog. And then um, they just decided to add just a little bit. These are more racks and stuff. You can see a coffee mug down there. Actually, no, that's not a coffee mug, but it could be. It could be some kind of uh, something in the kitchen. And then this little, oh, there goes the hot dog. This little printed piece that shows a nice little bar of chocolate, not an exclusive print or anything. But uh, yeah, that's just about it for the uh, for the kitchen. The doors do technically open up on the other side. I've already started to push Tim out the other side there, though there isn't really enough space to actually get the minifig out in that little narrow area. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the kitchen. And let's check out uh, the last spot. Now this last scene makes the most sense for just kind of 
the vicinity, I mean, the, the uh, lab, the, the embryos and stuff for all the different dinosaur DNA, I think was quite close to the control center room here. Um, but it is just kind of too bad because none of the characters really play any big part within this room. This is just kind of a fun sort of added on area. This is a little sticker says uh, embryo cold storage restricted. And of course, uh, Newman doesn't, uh, doesn't follow those rules. That is the uh, elusive shaving cream bottle that gets covered in mud at the end of this. Uh, that'd be funny if there was a nice little like Barbasol print there, but this is, yeah, it's supposed to be a Barbasol uh, shaving cream uh, kit here. And then this is one of the opened embryo storage containers. So it kind of comes out and, and you can open it up and, and uh, get all the different vials of different dino DNA. And I think this is one of the closed storage containers here. I like the, the use of, this is the railing, but really they're just kind of tail or tusk pieces used there. Works out pretty well, just a nice little, just a little danger sticker. And there isn't a whole lot more going on in this area. Uh, I do want to say they did decide to include the security cam. This is um, part of the virus that was, that, uh, that Newman enacted also shut off um, the security cam footage so he couldn't be uh, implicated. He wouldn't be on a visual record of him actually stealing the DNA. So anyways, just another little Easter egg here. And uh, yeah, that's about, that is about it for all the different little spots in the main bit of the build. This is actually the last part of the build. It's just a nice little build for a step ladder. And this is uh, in reference to when the, the raptor is coming and they're climbing into the rooftops. I'm pretty sure it's Lex. She's the last one up and uh, you know, they're pulling her up and the, and the raptor jumps and she just makes it into the hole before it uh, chomps her leg off. So I like that they added this little ladder piece. I suppose they had just a few more parts to add. And now let's take a closer look at the, at the raptor itself like all of the carnivorous creatures within this wave. It has that great little snap function. Um, it works quite well. It opens easily and closes quite easily. So that's, that's nice. And uh, the arms come off in the same way that the arms come off for any of these guys. It's just a regular pin piece. Same thing with the legs. You can actually mix and match the leg and arm pieces between different dinosaurs, between different sets. I'm kind of curious to play around with that function myself. And uh, yeah, the raptor looks good though. It's very similar or pretty much the same mold as any of the other raptors we've seen from years past. But uh, you know, I think they made it right the first time and if it ain't broke, uh, don't fix it. So in conclusion, I'd say this set is probably my favorite from the entire wave. I mean, there is of course the nostalgia factor for me, but I was really surprised to see that the part to price ratio was so darn good. I was super convinced that if they were gonna make a set like this, it was gonna be totally not worth its money. Technically, it is still over kind of the average part to price ratio for maybe an average Lego themed set, but that is just sort of, I guess, the universal license, like the actual studio universal with Jurassic World. I think uh, they figured they could just charge kind of a little bit more for these dinosaur sets, which kind of makes sense. And um, yeah, I think this, this set is good though. The minifigs, were printed really, really well. Maybe Tim and Lex could have had their own special unique printings and just instead of maybe kid, standard kid face prints, that's like the only thing I can think of off the top of my head that maybe I would have wanted more, but no, I like it. I, I, I think this is my favorite set, yeah, from the entire Jurassic World line. Oh, hey everybody, hope you enjoyed that video. I just wanted to pop in really quick and say that we do have a web store, BrickVault.toys, uh, that sell instructions for super high quality mocks uh, that are built by incredibly talented designers. So that is the first link in the description below. And also there's other videos too. We've got other things if you want to watch that. All right, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time at BrickVault.